Thou art Petros, the rolling stone. But upon this Petra, this solid, immovable rock, whom we know to be Jesus, I will build my church. I was quite fascinated when I was visiting Rome and I went inside St. Peter's and there's a little a little pathway running around the edge of the dome. I looked and I said, well, I'd like to get right up there and walk around. They said you can go up there. So I walked all these stairs way up inside the dome and here's this little track going around the dome. And as I stood up there, the size of the letters just hit me. They were immense written in Latin, Tu es Petros. You are Peter the Rolling Stone. And then I saw it, but upon this Petra, it was written there. Petros and Petra were both there. So just for fun, I began to sing in my loudest voice. And it echoed all over the dome of St. Peter's, I think one of my greater moments. And I started to sing, the church has one foundation. Tis Jesus Christ our Lord. And of course the Swiss guards came up and gently escorted me out of St. Peter's. (laughs) But I had my moment in the sun. You are Petros. I am Petros. We are nothing but rolling stones. Jesus is Petra. He is the solid, immovable rock. Rejected by the builders, he became the chief cornerstone of the spiritual body of Christ. We are calling for those who are Petros this morning to be built upon the solid, immovable rock. To be able to say with Peter, with confidence, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In other words, you are God in the flesh. And now I'm saying to you, upon this Petra I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Wow. Did you hear that? The gates of hell will not prevail against what God has established on the rock Jesus Christ. The winds of turmoil may swirl around you, but the good news is the gates of hell will not prevail against you because your enemy is undone. He has been conquered at the cross. Do you believe it this morning? He is a conquered foe and Jesus has been victorious. Notice the next verse. Powerful verse 19. I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth, it literally reads in Greek, has already been bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth has already been loosed in heaven. Notice what Jesus is telling Peter. My spiritual house, my church is being built on the solid rock, not on you. Your enemy has no authority over you. I'm even putting in your hand the keys of the kingdom. If the enemy is using one of your family members, if he's using a friend or a colleague of yours to accomplish his purposes, please stretch out your hand and turn the keys of the kingdom and claim by faith the promise that's in this beautiful offer here and God will bind the enemy from being able to use that person to accomplish his purpose. There's a church in Southern California where there's an old retired pastor. He's the single biggest pain in the neck of my acquaintance. 
I call him a terrier. He nips at my heels every time he's around me. Like the one who bites the horse's heels so the rider falls backwards. He comes to my seminars and sits at a table with six or eight other people and while I'm teaching the word he gets them into a different passage from what I'm teaching. He's so opposed to the gospel it's not funny. And God said to me one day, why are you fretting about this? Well, I said to God, I wouldn't mind not fretting, but I don't know what to do with this guy. God said to me, why don't you turn the keys of the kingdom? I said, wow, never thought about it. So I turned to Matthew 16 and I started reading about the keys of the kingdom. So I was due to go to this church for a seminar. He's not only disrupting seminars, he's dividing a whole church. And some very close friends of mine that I had led to an understanding of the good news, he's pulled back into a legalistic path. God said, well, claim them back. Ask God to bind the enemy from using this guy. So I was having a seminar at this church and I claimed the promise. I actually put my hand out like this and I said to God, I'm turning the keys of the kingdom. I'm asking you to bind the enemy this whole weekend so that the terrier will not be nipping at my heels and he will not be pulling people away from the good news of what you've offered them in Christ. Friday night, I'm just about to start the seminar and the terrier walked up to me. He said, I've got very bad news for you. I said to myself, well, if it's bad news for him, it's probably good news for me. <laughs> so I said, what's the bad news? He said, the bad news is that I will not be here for the rest of the weekend. This is the first time. I said to him, that is a disaster equal to one of the seven last plagues. This is two years ago. Three months later, my friends came back into the light. He's now calling them instruments of Satan because they are rejoicing in grace by which they are saved through faith. He's lost all power. He has resigned from this church and taken himself away where he says, I found some people that want to walk with me. I said, well, blessings on you. We have been totally delivered. How's your faith here this morning? 